Okay. A little heavy today. Well, this won't be so bad. Uh, we're looking at transformation of functions. So we start off, since we're talking about transforming parent functions, to be more specific. So first we need to remember what our parent functions are. Uh, so first one, constant function. Uh, we're not going to see this one too much. That's just f of x equals a, where a is any uh, number. And all that is, if we just pick uh, x to be some number, it's just going to make a horizontal one. So that would be where, where y equals 2. So no matter what x is, y is 2. Okay. Our second one, identity function. This is the parent function to, a, to every linear function where f of x equals x. So that's your, it's proportional with a slope of one. So it just makes a nice straight line like that. Okay, so there's our parent to a linear function. Uh, absolute function, remember f of x equals the absolute value of x. So that makes our V shape. Okay, uh, we haven't done this one this year, but you saw it a lot last year, quadratic function, where f of x equals x squared, and that makes a parabola. And that's all I can, well, this should be 2, 4, so all right, in case you want to be super specific here. So instead of V shape, it's more U shapes. And then it's not listed on here, but you're going to see it. Is the square root function, and that is f of x equals the square root of x, and that kind of well, that's not perfect. It's like that. It's only half of a graph because remember square roots can't be negative because those don't exist. Or they're not uh, real numbers. And we'll get to that later on in the year. All right, so that's what we're going to see. A majority of what you're going to see square root, quadratic, absolute. That's the big three. You should be able to recognize uh, those three. And really, it's just a matter of do you see the absolute value sign? Do you see a square root sign? Or do you see the exponent? That's going to be your tell. Okay. Here's the heavy part. I would write this down. Even if you have this printed out, I'd write it down again. Okay. So they sort of took all of our functions and said they all can fit into this sort of generic vertex form. Almost vertex form, except for this gold part. We're going to get more into that. Uh, so f of x, negative a, and then this looks like parentheses, but that's going to change depending on your function. Like if this was an absolute set of parentheses, you'd have absolute value bars. If it's square root, you have a square root sign here. And we'll see more of that in here in a second. But what you want to take away from this, what you want to memorize, even though you have the chart available, I would try my best to memorize these, is what each of these things does to our graph. That way you don't have to grab everything and just look at it and be like, I know what's happening. So if you have a negative on the outside, it's going to reflect over the x-axis. Okay. So that's just going to flip it top to bottom. Okay. Uh, this coefficient on the outside is going to stretch or compress it. We call those vertical stretch compression. If it's greater than one, it's being stretched vertically. If it's between zero and one, it's being compressed vertically. Okay. On the inside of these parentheses, if this is negative, it's a reflection over the y-axis. Don't worry so much about this one. You're not going to see too much of that or any of that, I don't think. Okay. But if you see a coefficient of x, so it's almost like what we had here, except it's switched around. So if it's greater than 1, it's a horizontal compression. Okay. So notice when it was greater than one on the outside, it was a stretch. 
When it's greater than one on the inside, it's compression. And instead of vertical, now it's horizontal. Okay? And then the same is true if it's between zero and one, now it's a horizontal stretch. And we'll graph this out at the end so you can get an idea of what that means. But you just need to know, we need to recognize what those words are and where they fit into our equation. Okay, the last two are a lot easier. Uh, we saw these a little bit uh, when we did uh, absolute value graphing. H shifts it left and to the right. Remember, it's always sort of the opposite of what you think it would be. So if it's negative H, it goes right. If it's positive, it goes left. And then K works exactly the way you think it should. If it's negative, shifts the whole thing down. If it's positive, shifts the whole thing up. Okay, we're gonna see a whole bunch of this. Keep this handy anytime you answer questions this week. Uh, make sure you have this available to you. This is like the answer key right here. Okay, so it sort of writes it out. And these are actual vertex form, which is nice. Except for linear equations, we didn't talk about linear too much because it doesn't fit into that form. But we remember M is slope. Uh, B is uh, Y intercept. Okay. And then a couple extra rules. We'll say this can't shift left or right. That's a big one. You can only shift up and down. And no. Horizontal compression or stretch. So if you see a linear equation, don't worry too much about it because it cannot transform as much as the other three. Okay. All you need to worry about does it move up and down? Uh, does it vertically get stretched? And that's just changing the slope, and we'll see that one. Uh, what was the other thing? And if it's negative, you know it's gonna flip over the y-axis, okay, or x-axis, y-axis, one of the axes. Okay, on a quadratic equation, I don't know that box here. So it just wants to know what's the vertex, and so the vertex of this is just h comma k. Nice and simple. So if it looks like this, vertex is at h. If you have a square root function, oh, I should like write these out, this is linear. Uh, so square roots. So vertex here would also be HK. I'm not sure why my case is uppercase. They're not, they're lowercase. And this is absolute. So the vertex of this one is also HK. Okay, so all this is saying, if you have it in this form, looks just like that, your vertex is always at the point HK. Okay. Uh, keep in mind, when we have them in vertex form here, there's no coefficient in front of X, which means if you see a problem that has a number here and a number here, you're going to have a little bit of trouble. So we're going to get more into that later. But if there's a horizontal uh, compression or stretch along with a shift left and right, makes things a little bit more difficult. Okay, that's right. where we we'll get to. Little baby steps. So here we go. So f of x equals three fourths x minus one squared minus four. So what kind of what kind of function is that? So we see a squared, so I know this is quadratic. Nice and simple. Okay. I see negative one and negative four here. So if I want the vertex to skip ahead, if I see minus one, that means H is going to be the opposite of that. So it's positive one, or it's just one to the right. And K, negative four. So vertex is gonna be a one negative four. Okay. So what that means is this would shift one to the right. And since k is negative 4, 4 down, okay? And then we also have this 3 fourths here. So we go back to our chart. 
we see what does that mean? What if we have three fourths out here? So that's between zero and one, so we say this is a vertical compression. So we could say this as a vertical compression of three fourths. Okay, and there you go. That's how we would explain what happened here. And then again, we'll look at what that graph looks like in a little bit. But for right now, what you need to be successful today is you need to recognize which way does it shift, which way does it compress or stretch, uh, where is the vertex, and what kind of function it is. If you can do those things, you're fine. There's no real calculating going on. All right, the next one. This is where, this is where it's a little bit weird. So this is definitely a square root function. Uh, hmm, I don't even want to talk about this. Let's do this one. Let's, so since we have this four here, so it's on the inside of the square root, so it's this gold one here. So it's a horizontal stretch or compression. Since four is greater than one, we say it's horizontally compressed. And then we can say, uh, since this is plus one, it's going to shift to the left. We're going to leave that number blank for now. And then since we have minus three for k, it's going to shift down by three. Okay. All right. So the problem here, the vertex, you think, oh, the vertex is uh, it's negative one, negative three. Think so, right? Remember, when we say the vertex, that's the that's the minimum point and the maximum point. It's where everything in the square root would equal zero. So how can I make this whole square root equal zero? So we would say, well, what's four x plus one? What value makes that zero? So we would do minus one. So four x equals negative one divided by four. So x actually equals negative one fourth. So our vertex here, negative one fourth minus three. And that's just a hassle. This shouldn't be a thing. And normally when you see these problems, they'll give it to you in this form here. So we shouldn't ever see. So it just makes life difficult to have horizontal compression and a shift left or right at the same time, because it's just extra work you don't see it all that often, but it might happen. And when we run into it in an actual problem, I'll be sure to let you know. So this actually doesn't shift left one. It shifts left negative one four. Okay. But all you need to know for today is just that it shifts to the left. If you get that, you're good to go. Okay. Don't worry so much about the math part. Just be able to follow the rules. Okay. Let's do a couple of these for a time here. So the first couple questions are just going to ask you what's the vertex, what kind of function it is. So remember, if you see square, this is quadratic. If we have negative one, that means our the x value of our vertex is going to be positive one. Since k is one, that's just going to be one. There you go. Okay. So remember, when you're writing the vertex, always going to be the opposite sign for x, same sign for y. Uh, let's do, let's do, actually, let's do number three, because we haven't seen one of these. So since we have the absolute value signs, this is an absolute function. Absolute. The vertex, since it says plus nine, so we know the x value is going to be negative nine, and our vertex plus two means plus two there as well. There you go. Let's label it. Find the vertex. And then when you get further on, they give you more complicated stuff. And then we just need to list out what's happening here. So let's say number 10. So we have positive 2 on the outside. So this is going to be a vertical. So I know if it's on the outside, it's vertical. Then I go to my chart, in case I forgot, because I forget. 
it's greater than one, it's a stretch. So since it's positive two, let's say vertical stretch. I see minus six in the parentheses, so I know that's a shift. Whoops, hold on, hold on. Yikes. <laughs> that's a shift right. Uh, since it's plus seven, as a shift up. And there you go. That's what we're looking for. You check off everything that's going to be true. Uh, let's, do, let's do one that looks a little bit different. All right, so how about number 16 here? 16 doesn't have parentheses at all. And so if it doesn't have parentheses, this is the trick here. You don't see parentheses, it can't be any of that. Okay, so all we're looking at if there are no parentheses is A and K. That's all we can have. So we see 5x squared. So I know 5 is on the outside, so that's a vertical stretch. And since I see minus 8, that's going to be K. So it's going to be a shift. Okie dokie. So that's what we're looking at. If you have trouble, let me know. Don't worry, we're going to practice this all week. So if it'll make sense Thursday. Uh, what I wanted to look at, though, was what these graphs look like. So what I did, I went to mydesmos.com and I put in three equations one for uh, quadratic, one for absolute and one for square root. And you can see those three. You could make these as well, and then you can hide them. If you just want to look at one, if you want to, if you want to check all your answers, you can graph them all. Uh, we added some sliders here for a, b, h, and x. So here's our, this is our parent functions, right? a and b are both one, h and k are zero. So let's look, let's start with the easy one. So h, that's our shift left and right. So we can see as we make h bigger, it shifts to the right, we make h smaller, shift to the left. We move k up, goes up, goes down. Right, nothing new there. Okay, so what about our stretch and compress? So if I take a, that's my vertical stretch, and you can see as that increases, it gets pulled upward. So when you think of vertical stretch, think of like a hand above and below the function, right? Grabbing onto it, and as it gets bigger, it's pulling it apart. So it's like stretching it out. You can sort of visualize, right? Stretch. And then the opposite is true. When this gets less than one, let me be careful here. A little too far. You can see how instead of stretching it out, now it's, it's squishing it down. It's compressing it against this, uh, this horizontal axis, which is kind of weird because it's a vertical compression. So it's compressing it from top to bottom, okay? And that one, that makes, that kind of makes sense, right? Not too bad, hopefully. The one that's kind of weird is the horizontal stretch and compress, because it pretty much does the same thing. As it gets bigger, right? But now instead of hands top and bottom, now we're saying horizontally, so we're saying, if I can get in frame here, as that gets bigger, you're, you're, you're compressing it horizontally. It's taking up less space from left to right, right? You're squishing it together. That's why the words are, they're flipped around. So when A is big, that's a stretch, right? But when B is big, that's a compression because it's horizontal. And then the opposite is true. When this gets to be less than one, you see now if I can get it, okay? So now it's taking that equation and it's, it's pulling it apart. It's stretching it out, but horizontally, okay? So these are, they're not that impressive with these functions. It's like, wow, who cares? Vertical, horizontal, they seem to be the same thing. That's true, that's true. But we're trying to set you up for later on. So when you get to pre-calc and you start doing cool trig functions, like right here we have similar idea, oops, y equals, not that that's gonna change anything. So now we have the cosine of x, which makes this nice wave function, okay? And uh, still, as we move k, it moves it up and down. h moves it 
left and right, but it looks a lot cooler when it moves left and right. Now let's put these back, zero, zero. Okay, but what happens when we vertically stretch it out? And you can see it's literally, it's pulling the equation out vertically. And then when we compress it, it's getting squished down right onto the x-axis. And then our horizontal stretch, you can see much more how it, when it gets bigger, it's getting compressed. The actual waves are compressing in. And then horizontal uh, stretch, wait, did I say stretch before? Compress when that got bigger. And then a stretch as it gets smaller, okay? So this looks much cooler, the transformations, later on in your math career. So right now it's all just, it's very basic stuff. And so really focus on, focus on, let me bring my chart back up so you can save this forever. Focus on this chart right here and don't actually cross stuff out on it because you need almost all this. All right, cool. Good luck. It's going to be all right. I promise.